Pressure is mounting to release the body cam footage in Wednesday's deadly shooting involving Minneapolis police. An officer shot and killed a man while serving a search warrant on the seventh floor of the Bolero Flats apartment building downtown. Police say the man had a gun. Nearly a dozen lawmakers are now calling for that video's release as well, including Representative Esther Agbaje of Minneapolis. Now she lives in the building where this happened and she heard the sirens. What do you want the mayor to do? Well, we're asking for the release of the body cam footage just so that way we have more transparency. We understand what happened that night. Um, I think it'd be helpful for community members to just have an understanding of that. Fox 9's Paul Bloom live for us at Minneapolis City Hall tonight. Uh, Paul, any indication that this body cam footage might be released tonight? Well, Amy, those calls certainly getting louder and louder tonight. Activists have come down to City Hall at this hour. They're preparing uh, to host basically a, a news conference uh, and rally as they demand full transparency in the shooting death of 22-year-old Amir Locke. Now, we did hear from the mayor's office today. They said Jacob Fry is committed to first giving the Locke family the opportunity to watch that video before releasing it publicly. And then he is committed to getting that video out there as long as it doesn't impact the integrity of this BCA criminal investigation. They loudly and repeatedly announced police search warrant before they crossed the threshold into the apartment. The interim Minneapolis police chief has said it was nine seconds. SWAT team members using a key fob to enter unit 701 inside the Bolero Flats apartment tower in downtown Minneapolis before 7 a.m. on Wednesday. Nine seconds. Officer Mark Hanneman opened fire. A mere lock. We're told armed with this loaded handgun. Dead. Questions a day later continuing to swirl around what has been described as a high risk, no knock warrant executed in connection to an open St. Paul homicide investigation. Whether or not Locke was in fact the man law enforcement was looking for. It means exercise due diligence. Don't bust into people's homes. They could have waited for whomever they were after to come outside of the building instead of busting into an apartment. We know how these things end. All Activists gathered outside the apartment complex hours later claimed Locke had a concealed carry permit and demanded the immediate release of body camera footage. MPD has said that the 22-year-old Locke had the firearm, quote, pointed in the direction of officers. We have to make a split-second decision um, at a rapidly evolving dynamic situation. Jamal Nauer has 15 years of law enforcement experience and is now running his own security and training company. When you do search warrants and stuff, you don't know what's on the other side of that door. And, uh, you know, when you're getting in that situation and you're serving a warrant, you don't know what's on the other side of that door. And then all of a sudden a gun comes out. It's, it's a very, very scary deal. As for Amir Locke, we just don't have a lot of information about him. We know he is 22 years old. A recent online search shows a Dallas, Texas home address. His family has not spoken in that spoken out publicly, but in the last few minutes I have heard from their civil attorneys. They'll be signing uh, with Ben Crump and Jeff Storms, the same uh, lawyers who uh, represented George Floyd's family in the aftermath of his death at the hands of MPD. As for the body camera footage and Amir Locke's footage, stay tuned. Still no firm answer from City Hall. We're live in downtown Minneapolis. Paul Bloom, Fox 9. All right, thank you, Paul. And while Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry has repeatedly preached transparency, neither the mayor nor his interim police chief have publicly answered any questions about yesterday's deadly shooting. Fox 9 investigator Nathan O'Neill spent the day at City Hall searching for some answers. It's been 30 plus hours since the fatal shooting of a man involving Minneapolis police at a downtown apartment building. Truth and transparency is, is always the case will be the guiding principles. Mayor Fry and interim police chief Amelia Huffman gave few details on the shooting during Wednesday's four minute press conference where they took no questions. Unfortunately, I won't be able to take questions today because the ongoing criminal investigation is in the hands of the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. So today we took our questions to City Hall asking to speak with the mayor in the name of transparency. We put in the request with, did, yes. to speak with the mayor. Is that going to be able to happen today? Um, we're still working on that, um, but as soon as we know anything, we will let you know. So um, there's lots of moving pieces. For years, Mayor Fry and his leadership team have preached transparency in policing, especially in the wake of George Floyd. We cannot lose sight 
of our shared values in this city, our shared commitment to transparency, to accountability, uh, and to justice. We also tracked down interim Chief Huffman as she was leaving a meeting at the mayor's office. Are you going to be talking about the shooting at all today? Uh, well, uh, we'll see. Right now I'm in the middle of um, doing a number of other pieces of work related to that, so I am going to get on with that and do my best to get more information out as soon as possible. Are you going to be able to hold a press conference where we'll be able to ask questions? We will sure let you know when we're able to do that. And again, as you have heard, the mayor's office did release a statement earlier today about the efforts to release body camera footage from the shooting. But again, this is the only sign of direct communication from the mayor's office in the form of written statements, a one-way conversation, which truly begs the question, is this what transparency looks like? For the Fox 9 investigators, I'm Nathan O'Neill. All right. Thank you, Nathan. Well, switching.